Shalom truth seekers. Uh, there's a lot I want to try to get through tonight, but it is getting late, so I hope I won't, I won't miss anything important. But with the fall equinox drawing closer and closer, I just wanted to uh, kind of put some, some tips out uh, for those who might be new at this, or just to refresh our memories. Uh, there are many different methods people are using. We're still very much in pioneering territory, I think. Um, there, there could be signs from the sun, moon, and stars possibly confirming the equinox event. I put another video out kind of looking at the moon, because I know the moon did it. Uh, uh, interesting portal alignment and uh, phase was even in, seemed to be in sync with uh, the spring equinox in this past 2019. Uh, but we weren't sure what was going to happen for the fall, and taking a peek in Solarium, it doesn't look like that's going to happen. But maybe, you know, who knows if, uh, <laughs> I guess the, uh, we're just, we're just learning. We're in pioneer territory. But anyway, so the one method I'm going to talk about is the straight line method. And if you've seen all my other videos, or any of my other videos talking about this method, I will most of them, if not all of them, you will have heard me mention that it is important to still prove this method and all other methods out. Um, but I first heard about the straight line method from uh, watching Juan Carlos Life to the Nations YouTube channel, uh, and I've tried to find out where this came from. I've talked to an actual, like, uh, what do they call them, astronomer, somebody who actually, like, you know, pays attention to the stars and the sun and the moon kind of as an occupation, and they didn't even know what the straight line method was, so I don't, I don't know where that came from or what kind of science there is to explain that, but, um, it does seem to be an interesting phenomenon that occurs. And, uh, I, I, I mean, I really like it, and I would really like it to be, uh, a sign that can be used to confirm the Equinox event, but it's something that I believe still needs to be proved out, as, again, as I've said in many of my other videos, because I think they're just, there, there's just potential, there is the potential it might not confirm the Equinox event. And so, I mean, it's just, without getting too much into that, I have another video where I kind of lay out my concerns with it, and I'll put a link for it at the end of this video as food for thought. But it might. Um, it, 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 we're just in pioneer territory, and we need to kind of confirm these things. But, anyway, so the, if you're looking at this picture, you know, the these are the three patterns when you're collecting, sh uh, when the sun casts a shadow off of some object, like a sundial, uh, the tip of a sundial, be it a short nail or a really tall sundial, you're gonna, you're gonna, these X's represent the marks that you collect over the course of a day, and, um, you'll see these three patterns at different times of the year. And definitely for the, and this is looking, so I'm looking south here, you'll see this smiley face pattern leading up to the summer solstice, and it, it seems to bend from a straight line to this curve. Uh, so not only is it moving away from the straight line, but it's also arcing. And this is kind of an important thing that I want to remind us of for, for the straight line method, for whatever it's worth. <clears throat> but, um, so it seems that very close to the equinox, if not possibly on the equinox, you will eventually see a straight line pattern. And, again, like I said, it may or may not confirm the equinox, and my main concern for that is just the thought process of needing to have equal seasons between these solar signs. Um, because these solstice events are very clear to to define because you just see the sun kind of hit an extreme and then return. Likewise with the, this solstice it hits an extreme and returns and everyone on our sees that regardless of all these other variables and concerns I have for the equinox event. 
but for the Equinox event, it's just uh, it's just a, a line in the middle, and I just don't know. Um, it could, it may or may not. Uh, but anyway, so you'll notice I do say here at the equator, and um, we'll talk more about that in a minute. But the tip I want to say again, th there may be some question, even if the straight line pattern doesn't confirm the equinox event, it's still an interesting phenomenon that may help to answer some other questions. So I do recommend people try this method uh, and try other methods. There are lots of other methods that people are using, so it'll just be interesting to see what, uh, what people come up with. But as far as the straight line method goes, the biggest tip I can suggest for you is as you collect points over the course of a day, be sure to collect points as early in the morning as you can and as late in the evening as you can because it's in the morning and the evening that the arc is swinging up. So if you only collected data from like here to here, you might get something that looked like a straight line on a on a different day, but if you had collected data out here, that's where it starts to arc more. And so, I that's my biggest recommendation. I think if you do it with a taller sundial, it will help as well. Things will become more pronounced and easier to see. But I think the switching of this arc is so severe for for the timing of this straight line event, be it equinox or not, that even with a short sundial, like three or f six inches tall, you should be able to see the arc flip. And it does seem like we have confirmed, uh, truth seekers have working together have confirmed that the arc, you will see these three patterns in three back-to-back -back days, so you'll see an arc uh, you'll see a straight line and an arc, and <laughs> actually there there is possibly something unique that happens with uh, with what I've been calling a sign day. It's it's possible that oh where would that one be? It's possible that it takes more than 24 hours for the sun to yield a straight line pattern for everyone on Earth. And so if it does, there is a possibility um, that right around right around where the day begins, the Creator's International Dateline, not the man-made International Dateline, but Stellarium shows this International Dateline to be shifting, and I mean, I think that has to do with 365.25 has to, it causes that shift, it's the extra 0.25. It takes an extra 0.25 for the sun to finish its seasonal cycle of north-south movement. So it jumps every year. But there's the potential that um, if the sign day for the solstice I think we discovered began somewhere in here. It's possible that if it begins somewhere in here now, because it's it's jumping forward, if it does that, I think there is a possibility that there's an overlap zone at the beginning and end of a sign day where some people, if they're in that overlap zone, might actually see the straight line pattern uh, or a partial straight line pattern for two days in a row. I think, I think there might actually only be one full day that they see the straight line pattern. So if you see a partial straight line pattern, you need to time. Time is where you are, and time begins as soon as you see the sign. I think. So, but just to be aware of that, there's an interesting, I heard from another truth seeker uh, recently, and he is the first person I have ever heard of to actually see the straight line for part of a day, and then see it go, start to curve. So he, I believe, thinks um, the equinox happened on the 20th of March 2019, and this 
the day after that, he noticed the line was still going straight a little bit, and then halfway through the day, it started to curve. So again, this is the first time I've seen that. I'll show you what he said about that specifically, if my computer don't freeze. Oh. So this is what he has to say about that um, observation he made. So it was perfectly straight until about 4.30 in the afternoon, and then it started curving. So that's interesting. So that is going to happen somewhere for some people, and uh, I wonder... I wonder what exactly, how exactly that's going to play out, because if Stellarium is right, then then it seems the, the start of the seasons is literally jumping, um, and so for, for this upcoming event, if, if we were correct that the sign day began somewhere in here, then it's possible the next sign day might begin somewhere in here. So I just want to say that in case, uh, who knows, but uh, <laughs> food for thought. So anyway, um, I did want to say another thing about this to lead into uh, the next point of discussion. You know, straight line methods, uh, you know, that could be great, that might work. Uh, I would love if it did. We need to prove it out. And But the thing is, when I read Enoch, Enoch seems to say that the seasons need to be equal. Um, and so, uh, being so, having confirmed the solstice event, like, I just wonder, in order for the seasons to be equal, I'm kind of uh, thinking we're, we're just going to have to collect more data and see, and, but I recommend you check out my other video where I am talking about the seasons not being equal and how potentially they, modern science is claiming the seasons aren't equal, but I think that that might be just because they're kind of they don't understand the, the proper criteria for an equinox event uh, scripturally. They have scientific things that they think they're doing, measuring off the stars and measuring when the, the center of the sun's disk is crossing different points on the horizon or the equator. But uh, the, the thing is, be it straight line method, be it um, uh, the method of the sundial that Jerry Morris and Juan Carlos used that kind of looks like um, a couple arms, uh, I think it the armillary or something they might call it, or be it measuring an angle of the sun on the day of the equinox. Again, I, I, I've said it before and I'll say it again, I'd like to recommend that we just put ourselves in the shoe, try to put ourselves in the shoes of the ancients and make sure whatever we do, there is a way that they could replicate what we're doing. So for example, for measuring an angle to the sun, how would the ancients have done that? In my mind, they would have had to known, you know, they wouldn't have been able to go to Google and say what angle is the latitude and what angle should the sun be at for this day or, you know, they didn't have that at their disposal. So the only way I can think they could have figured it out would have been to, um, know when the solstice events were, and then actually pick the day between those two solstice events, and that would have been their equinox, and that would have been their angle to measure. Um, so, but anyway, um, I'd, all that said, I'd like to remind us of uh, what Enoch actually says about this. And, you know, Enoch doesn't talk about arm, arm milleries or however you say that. Um, and he doesn't talk about straight line methods, and he doesn't talk about measuring angles to the sun. What Enoch talks about is equal light and equal darkness. And so I got to thinking, you know, because I, I, I have a video um, where I discuss, like, the equinox versus the equal lux. And the equilux is a scientific term that, you know, science has come up with to define equal day and equal night. And as you move north and south uh, in the world, that day of equal light and darkness changes for everyone. Like if you go up to 
Alaska sometimes if you're, you know, they have like the 24 hour darkness, you know, and it's just, so it, the equilux is a variable thing for everyone depending on your location on Earth. The equinox, however, is supposed to be more of a standard thing, uh, you know, based off of uh, the sun actually crossing the equator. But, um, what I have discovered is, you know, I, I was curious. I wanted to see what is the day that modern science says the equator will have equal light and equal darkness. And I discovered something interesting just tonight. I haven't had a chance to study it thoroughly or process it thoroughly, but I wanted to share it as good for thought. Maybe someone else can contribute some analysis or thoughts about it. But it's very interesting because, like I said, Enoch doesn't talk about straight line methods. He doesn't talk about measuring angles. He doesn't talk about using tools like the armillary. He only says equal light and equal darkness. And I think it's specific, equal light and equal darkness, it, it has to be, I think, over the equator. Uh, and so I was just curious to see where, and, and by the way, that, that would be one way to kind of, another way to possibly confirm the straight line method is if we could get people at the, we need people north of the equator, south of the equator, and at the equator to try and do the straight line method. I don't think we've ever had that yet. We've had people in the north and we've had people in the south, but we've never had anyone near the equator. But if we can get the straight line pattern to happen uh, in all three of those locations with on the same day for everyone, then I think that would be a good uh, piece of information to have to possibly confirm that method. Uh, but anyway, so the equal light and equal darkness, I decided to go ahead and try and Google um, the equal light and equal darkness at the equator, and I started with um, timeanddate.com, and I googled cities on the equator, and Singapore came up. Uh, so I was I was amazed to see initially that there is um, here's the day length. There is it appears this data is saying there will never be exactly 12 hours of daylight. It just, um, for the entire month of September, it's not showing equal, see this is September, it's, it's always above 12 hours, and then if you go to October, um, it is all, it, you know, it's always above 12 hours as well, and we're getting way far away from the equinox at that point now, so it was like, huh, that's, that's weird. So I decided to try and search, um, I thought there was a better way to look at uh, daylight and darkness times in um, timeanddate.com, so I decided to Google it. I couldn't find it, but if someone knows where that is, please put a link in the comments below this video. But um, I stumbled onto a Navy site. Uh, and, long story short, I guess the, uh, yeah, U.S. Naval Observatory. And I kind of found the same thing, uh, you know, they were showing that there's longer than 12 hours, or, er, er, yeah, and never 12 hours at the equator. I had to type in the latitude and longitude of this location. But I discovered something interesting, and that was, uh... Oh, I'd love to show you, hmm, I'm gonna go back to see if I can show you, ooh, I don't want to lose that actually, because <laughs> I had to enter that information, uh, oh, it was kind of a pain, but wait, no, maybe it's on this page actually, let's see, uh, let's see here, oh yeah, check this out, I stumbled on this note here, for an explanation of why there is generally more daylight than darkness during the equinoxes and all the year at the equator, see length of a day and night at equinoxes. 
when I saw that I was just like, oh yeah, there's something that's got to be going on here because it's at the equinox and it's the equator and they've got to explain something special about this. So I clicked on it and this is where it takes you. And the important thing I'd like to point out here is this right here. So you can read this, you can go to the link yourself and check this out. And they're just talking about different ways to measure the sun based on, you know, where the disk is, if the center of the disk is crossing the equinox or the, equ or the equator or different, um, uh, the horizon, different things like that. But this is the interesting thing right here, this claim. Day and night are not exactly of equal length at the time of the March and September equinoxes. The dates on which day and night are each 12 hours occur a few days before and a few days after the equinoxes. I found that very interesting. And so if we go back to this data that I calculated from timeanddate.com, um, oh my computer's frozen, but over here, um, okay, yeah, so if you go to this link just for the seasons, you'll, you'll get this data, and I looked at it for a 10-year span, and I transposed it all over here, and I was just finding the differences between the seasons, and this was when I was trying to understand why modern science was claiming the seasons were not equal and it just seemed to me like a crazy thing like shouldn't all the seasons be equal I mean Enoch seems to say the seasons are equal so what's up with this and I theorized that from solstice to solstice that they would be pretty much equal except for the fact that they might be slightly off because of the duration of a sign day. I think they might be misunderstanding how the sun may actually hold its north-south position for a for special signs during the equinox and solstice events. They just assume it's constantly bouncing back and forth, but I don't think they've considered the possibility that it might actually freeze. It'll continue to move east to west, but, excuse me, but it might actually freeze and pause its north-south position on the days of the equinoxes. And uh, I've had a couple videos discussing equinoxes and solstices. I've had a couple videos discussing this recently, but I mean, there's just, um, you know, Enoch talks about the luminaries rendering service, extra service, it seems, and so I, I think modern science might be missing little subtle important things like that but anyway I, I theorized they would be clo close for the solstices and I theorized that the half seasons would be equal because how can you really screw that up like I said it, the solstice is so clear to define um, like the you know the you just see the sun hit an extreme point in return you don't have to look at the stars you don't have to look at the moon you don't have to look at anything it's just the sun is going to hit an extreme point in return so, um, I theorized that if modern science really couldn't get that wrong, and I mean, it, it, if they were off, it would only be by a little bit, just because of the duration of a, sol uh, of a sign day thing. And it turned out, um, it looked like this was true. So for, for half years, um, it looked like... It looked so. This was just the so the seasonal cycle. It looks like it truly might take 365.24 days to complete, and that's not to say that Enoch is an error. I just recommend you check out my videos that talk about um, the 365 and the seasons. That's how long I think it takes for the seasonal cycle to complete. But I, like I said, <laughs> I don't think that necessarily means Enoch is wrong. There's there's something deeper there to look into. But anyway, so. That would mean each season takes approximately 91.31 days to complete equal seasons. And so that's what I was comparing to. And um, it came out so that the from solstice to solstice, I was getting the seasons were very close. So they were only 0.4 days off, and I, I think that's because... Um, that's just because they're misunderstanding the sign days, but it's very close to being equal, and it was consistent. Like, this is consistent from from uh, half year to half year. They have equal duration. 
so half years they might be saying seasons are unequal but the half years are equal from solstice to solstice it looked like they were consistent so um, where does that take us I mean it, it, it begs the question like why are why is why are the seasons coming up unequal for the equinox event and I think that has to do with the way they are qualifying an equinox event and there's deep stuff I want to go more into it there's I just encourage you to look into it but preliminarily you know I think they're basing this off of lots of calculations and not so much observation and al also I think they're um, they're referencing it with respect to uh, you know moving stars rather than a consistent point on Earth and it's the side sidereal day stuff and it's just kind of a, an ambiguous thing but again I want to bring you back to what Enoch said Enoch said equal light and equal darkness was when these events that divide the seasons that's what you would see and so let's jump back to this website and this disclaimer here that says you know the dates on which day and night are equal and it, it does happen apparently occurs a few days before and a few days after these equinox events. And what did I find out in this data? So it was equal from solstice to solstice, but for some reason it's not equal from season to season. And look, it is ahead by two or three days, and it is behind by two or three days consistently. And that is why they say the seasons are not equal, but that matches what this is saying. Like, something is wrong with the way they are calculating these equinox events, I think. And and this, what they're talking about down here about measuring the disk might also have a part to do with it. But um, this does happen. Equal day and equal night does happen. And it, they're saying it happens two to three days before and after. That's important. Before and after. So it's not just consistently before both of them. It's before and after, and that's what we see in this data. They're saying it's before and after. So what happens if you even that out? Then all of a sudden you get, you will get the equal seasons, I think. And that's what Enoch described. He described equal light and darkness. So that's what we're looking for. And so I don't know if that is what modern science is projecting. That's not how they're qualifying an equinox event, I don't think. And I am not necessarily certain if the straight line method is necessarily calling that out or any of these other methods. I'm just not sure. I mean, I'm sure we'll be able to confirm it at some point. But I guess I'm just putting that out there as food for thought because there was an effort to confirm the summer solstice this past year, and there's just no guessing about that. I mean, we have to be careful to make sure we're, we're being accurate in our measurements, but there's no guesswork about this middle point here. Like, it is established. There's no moon or sun involved. The sun's going to hit its extreme and return. And so that's what we saw, and uh, it happened, it appears, it appeared to happen. It could, the majority might be wrong, but it, it appeared to happen. Again, it started here, and in the U.S. it was the uh, the 20th. So, looking at the timing of these solar events, like from there, counting one, two, three, counting 90 days plops us here, and 91 days. This theoretically, in in keeping with the timing of this uh, solstice event. The equinox event, it seems, should happen here. And, I mean, I think the test to confirm this is going to be to confirm when the winter solstice happens. And I do believe what we will find in the end is it's going to be equal time between the two solstice events. And the halfway marker, I believe, is going to land here. 
So I don't know if the straight line method is going to coincide with that or not. I just don't know. Um, but I encourage you to try it. And let's all get out there and collect data. I mean, we can try and make heads and tails of it later, but let's do the best we can. Try the straight line method. Try the armillaries. I, I mean, we're, we're learning every time we do this. So I'm, I think, where are we? The, um, the 14th. So I'm going to be collecting data all this week and uh, into next week to see what I see. I'll try and confirm what day the straight line method happens on. Uh, and, and that'll be good. Uh, it would be better if someday we just have more people doing that. And like I said, I'd like to see if someone near the equator actually sees the straight line method on the same day that everyone else does. Because right now, if you look at this spread of people, most of them, I think the equator is like down here somewhere, but most of them are about the same distance away from the equator north and the same distance south. So really, I'd really love to see someone near the equator try for the straight line method, and I think that would be very telling. So let's see, I think I'm just going to finish this up by showing pictures of, um, of the data I have been collecting so far, and uh, I guess we'll start with uh, what I was experimenting with the moon, and you can check out my other videos that I posted late, uh, lately about uh, what the moon will do for this fall equinox. We weren't sure if it was going to have a uh, portal alignment or not, or was the phase going to be a full moon, or uh, another thought I had was, is it possible that uh, the sun and the moon are going to be on opposite horizons, so it, could that potentially be a sign, like the moon is going to be on the, uh, you know, there, it's going to be completely opposite, so the, the phase might not match up and the portal alignment might not match up, but is there possibly anything to the them being on opposite horizons, like as the sun is rising, the moon is setting, or vice versa. Uh, so anyway, I mean, I'm not sure what's, what's going to happen. I think we need to do some translational verification of Enoch 1 to understand the moon's role in all this better. Um, but, um, just as food for thought, I'm going to share some, uh, some data I collected for the moon and the sun and some tips if you, I noticed uh, that I would recommend you trying and that might help you if you're trying to collect moon data. One thing, uh, one thing that's hard about the moon, I just, you know, I just didn't know what to expect. You've just got to try, you just got to dive in and you will find things that work for you, will, you will learn something that works well for you, uh, I mean, and certainly listen to your brother and sister truth seekers, and they'll have tips that can get you started or refine what you do, or, you know, we can all work together. But I'm going to share some things I noticed, and this is the moon, and what I was trying to do was I was trying to take pictures with a constant frame of reference, so I can measure the moon's location with respect to, like, a bush or you see these phone wires running across, or the power lines. So I've got three power lines, remember that. And the bushes are near, you know, they're just around here. And then in addition, you can see right here is, um, there's a frame that I'm shooting through. It's like a triangular frame. You'll see it better in the other pictures. But that was kind of my viewing window. So as long as I took a picture through this viewing window, I think I should be able to use these other reference points to gauge where the moon was. So in this picture you can see the moon is right above this middle line. Um, and I think um, I think this was like two weeks ago. It was before the moon hit its lowest position. So let's see. I experimented so now you can see this viewing angle. It's just like a, a brace, a diagonal brace under my porch and a post here. And so there you can see this is kind of my viewing angle. Um, and then I also realized I can see the moon from my office, and so this can also come in handy to be able to measure the moon's location, because it just jumps around so much, and I live and work and very far away from each other, but y you, can, um, you can see the moon during the day and the night, and you can measure its north-south location during the day and the night. Um, <coughs> so I've got a few pictures of that. So here is the moon. Now you'll notice I'm looking left. It wasn't 
it, it, when we saw the, the other picture of the moon was over this bush that was sticking up. There's like, it almost looks like there's a tree on top of all the other trees, but it was over here, so it's, it's still on its way down. It's like far away from there, but I'm looking through the same viewing angle. And then, you know, I, it was hours later when I came out to snap this picture, and it was like, oh great, like, <laughs> I can't really tell where that moon is, um, because it's too dark, and the camera, and whatnot, but, and that one what didn't really help, but then I tried something. I stuck the camera right in this hole, and I turned the flash on, and then I could see my wires that I saw before. And if you remember, um, the moon was above the wire um, in that other picture. So you can see that that was a that was a I I think a good I can use these lines as a reference. So I had to turn my camera flash on to see that, but thankfully the moon was bright enough where it came through the flash, and so I can I can see where the moon was with respect to those wires. And this was when it was getting closer to hitting its lowest position. There's another picture. Oh, okay. So another thing I want to mention just came to mind is uh, I did a video about finding the leader stars because Enoch talks about leader stars and I just think there must be stars that lead out in the portals <coughs> and um, so one thing that I I mean I just did one video trying to see what I could see and something did jump out at me and it's interesting for this picture because I know when I go out to this is our woodshed and we have a wood stove and I go out here in the evenings or mornings to put wood in and I notice in the winter time that the constellation of Orion is always up here. And <coughs> one thing I noticed in the other video I made recently was Stellarium. In, I mean, I, well, <laughs> I noticed that the constellation of Orion seems to be the perfect height for measuring the um, the portal movement of the sun and the moon moving through the six portals. That north-south movement. Orion, the constellation of Orion seems to be oriented perfectly vertical through all of those gates. And so I noticed that it appears the sun and the moon will go right under Orion, the constellation of Orion's feet during the uh, winter solstice. This is from viewing from the north, uh, North America. Might be different in the south. Uh, but, uh, and then for the summer solstice, it was uh, the sun and the moon would go right above his elevated hand. And the interesting thing was during the equinox event, or very near the equinox event, the sun and the moon seemed to travel right through his belt, like literally right through his belt. Very interesting. So uh, those are just some tips, like I'm talking about these wires as a reference point, but truly I think if you get to know your stars, those stars up there, are going to work way better than the wires because you'll be able to look up at the moon at night and be like, oh, it's it's there in this constellation. If it's near Orion, I would be able to say very confidently which portal the moon was in because the moon jumps a lot, so I, w I would know where that was. But I the problem is I only really know Orion and I don't really know any of the other constellations very well. So, uh, But that's uh, just some tips there. And, oh, this was a picture I took the other night when the moon was looking like it was pretty much full. And so uh, that was just something I wanted to compare against to see what the sun was doing at that point. And it looking in Stellarium, it's on a different computer, I can't show you here, but I did take a peek and it looks like the moon is supposed to hit full illumination. Um, it looks like... Ooh. Really? Oh, the 13th. Okay, so like, yeah, the 13th, I guess that would have been Friday. So, this picture I think I snapped Thursday night, and the moon was almost looking full, so I knew I wanted to get data, sundial data the next day to see if there was any correlation to the full moon. Like, again, we're looking to see if there's any correlation with, um, with uh, portal alignment of the moon, we're looking to see if there's any correlation with uh, phases of the moon, 
and we're looking to see if possibly there's any correlation with the moon setting at one horizon and the sun rising at the other horizon, or if that timing possibly has any significance. So, and then I got clouds. You gotta watch out for clouds, but you can, if you can see even barely, you can still kind of see my wire reference there. Um, but I forgot to turn my uh, flash on. But if I did turn my flash on with the moon behind the clouds, I don't know if I would have got the moon because it might have been too bright. So you just gotta experiment with this stuff. You'll find something that works for you. So anyway, then I did the next day. This was Friday. Um, I guess it would be the uh, 13th. I collected data to see what the sun would be doing um, in correlation with this nearly a full moon. And uh, so, just so you know, the way I do this, the way I collect my data, um, I will show a letter and then a date, the 9th and the 5th of, you know, the Gregorian date and the time. Uh, but from there, I'll only show the letter A because it can get too congested. Um, so, B would be a different date. That was 9-6. And, uh, you know, C was 910, and I think D, you can't see it, I've got a better picture of it, but the D marks were from the 13th. So, uh, let's see what we got next. So I plopped a straight line down on there, and I'll zoom in on this, but you can see there, I grabbed the top D point here, and D point there, and you can see there's still, certainly still arcing going on. So there's my first D point on the right, and the last D point on the left. It's not quite on there, but it, it's it's still quite a significant uh, movement. Uh, so what that means to me is, um, I guess there wasn't, for whatever that's worth. Like I said, because uh, <laughs> maybe the straight line method isn't even what was supposed to match up with the moon, maybe it coincidentally did this spring, I'm just not certain, I just hope we continue to collect more data, and I'm sure we're going to figure it out eventually, but I'm, I'm just not sure I'm in the process of proving these things now, but preliminarily, if there's anything to the straight line method, it does appear that the mm, straight line did not coincide with the um, with the full moon for this fall equinox. So the next thing to see is if that portal alignment's going to happen, but from the preliminary look I took in Stellarium, it doesn't look like that's going to happen, but we'll see. Maybe Stellarium is programmed incorrectly. And the last thing I'll want to see is if there's correlation with the horizons, like the moon setting as the sun. Because I thought there was a verse in Enoch that talked about, like, and she sets opposite of the sun, blah, blah, blah. So, oh, we made it. I think, I think that's all I have to say. <sighs> I hope, I hope this was um, of some value for someone. Like I said in summary, just get out there and collect some data. Uh, I hope, you know, we're gonna learn. It won't be for naught. I really think as you get out there and you start trying this stuff out, the creator starts to give an understanding of these things more and more um, in ways that you wouldn't have got if you were reading books. So again, my biggest tip for this Equinox event, try the straight line method, and when you do, make sure you get a point, at least one point in the early morning, and at least one point um, in the evening that might be opposite, uh, and one point near solar noon, and if you get at least those three points, that'll be the best way to tell which day the straight lines me method is happening. Because you can only grab, if you only grab from like 10 p 10 a.m. to 3 p.m., then you might get a section that looks kind of straight, but that's just because you were missing all of this bend that happens out here. So I'd recommend, if you can, I've seen people collecting data as early as like 8 in the morning. Um, so. I'd recommend, if you can, try and go go from like 8 to 6 if at all possible, and that'll, that'll be really the best case scenario to come from the straight line method, but uh, looking forward to seeing what everyone else comes up with with all their other methods, and um, we will try and, uh, try and organize all that into one place and share it with truth seekers so we can kind of try and make sense of it from there, so 
I hope you will, if you want to take part in this study, please let me know and I'll get you added to this list. And um, I think I'm going to change the format of this a little because, um, you know, I call this spring equinox, summer solstice, fall equinox. But the thing is, uh, I'm just not sure. Like this, I'm pretty sure, is an accurate way to describe that because we're, we're pretty much all looking for the sign to return. But for this category, um, we are looking for the fall equinox, but we're all using these different methods. And I think it's important that I don't just say spring equinox, this date, because what this date represents for me is only the date that I saw the straight line method and it's only the date that I believe we might have saw the moon sign too, but, like I said in my other video, it's possible, who knows, um, you know, it's possible the moon sign happened at the end of, at the end of this day, or like the end of this day, and we associated with the sunlight from this day, but it, maybe it could have been associated with the sunlight from this day, because it happened here, so it could have been this one or that one. I'm just not sure, but what I'm trying to say is, I want to try and set this up so it's kind of more accurately defining what was observed on this day. Like it might have, it may or it might not have been uh, the actual spring equinox, but what it what it was was the day that the straight line method was saw. So I'm, that's why for this one I'm kind of saying what the method was, but there is a question of the okay that might have been, and I'll include the dates, but. That might have been the date that this method seemed to say something happened, an interesting phenomenon, but does that phenomenon nece necessarily confirm the equinox? So anyway, that's, um, the please join this effort. Uh, shalom, and may Abba bless you as you continually seek out his truth in love with a pure heart.